Hi, I'm Carrie Hughes, here in session on LDB10.com. With me today is special guest, founder and producer, Samori Coles. Hey there, Carrie. Hi, Samori. How are you? I'm wonderful. Yourself? I, I'm great. Thank you. Good. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your roots? You mentioned you're originally from Omaha, Nebraska, correct? Sure. Um, I was uh, born and raised in Omaha, Nebraska, which is the Midwest. Uh, I have a mother who always had me involved in music, fortunately. It was the uh, violin in second grade. I uh, eventually settled in on the drums um, and journeyed through trumpet and a couple other instruments before that. Um, but I uh, went to church as a child and really was highly influenced by uh, music in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, and have performed, you know, in different types of showcases and those types of things. So that's kind of how I got started musically. Very cool, very cool. But you um, you have a couple degrees in not anything musical re related, correct? That's correct. I went to school for business. Uh, I went to school at Creighton University, also in Omaha, Nebraska, and received degrees in marketing and finance. So right out of school, uh, I went to work as a financial analyst. Um, and it was, it was fun work, but I definitely have always had that passion for music and the creative arts. So, you know, after college, I did go to work as a financial analyst for a local railroad in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, but, you know, music kept calling me. You know, this was the mid-90s. People were starting to build home studios. And I had some buddies who actually had some uh, studios at home. They had some keyboards, some four-track recorders, and I fell in love. Fell in love with the ability to create my own music, to, to put it out there. And um, from that point on, I really transitioned from a career that would have been corporate focused to a career that's music focused. And, I, and you know, I'm, I'm happy because of it. Nice. So what do you, would you say was the turning point for you to decide to really pursue this dream of music? You know, I don't know that there was any one turning point. Um, I think that, you know, like I said, from childhood, I was inspired by the music at church. You know, I was playing musical instruments, going to band camps, and, and I, I won't say I was uh, a master musician growing up as a child, but definitely, you know, I kind of, that passion to pursue music was instilled. You know, I would listen to records for hours as a child. I would listen to Earth, Wind and & Fire and, you know, Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson, you know, for hours and read liner notes. And, and this was just one of my pastimes as a child. So there wasn't one turning point, but definitely um, after college, when I had a chance to make some music with some friends, you know, we ended up producing a record called To Whom It May Concern. And at that time, we had just got a community radio station back home. So that record, To Whom It May Concern, started to get a lot of rotations on this radio station. And at that time, a lot of people were listening in. So there was that bug of kind of, um, I won't say celebrity, but, but instantly people knew that I could make music. Um, but then also that passion for business from my schooling. So at that point, I just wanted to try to find a way to make music and make a living. Cool. So when did you relocate here to Philly? What made you decide to come to this city? Well, that, that's a good question. Uh, probably around 1997, I ended up uh, you know, getting on a Greyhound bus and uh, coming out to the East Coast. And init initially, I moved out to uh, a city just outside of Trenton, New Jersey. Um, and at the time, I could hear the local radio station in Philadelphia, and it was just electric. It really was electric hearing about all the, the artists that were coming to Philly. Everybody from Outkast to, to Goody Mob to Nas, you know, just coming through Philadelphia. So I, I just knew that I, I wanted to come to Philadelphia to see what was going on. And, um, you know, because of the uh, academic background, I was able to take a job with a company in Philadelphia so that I could bootstrap this company you know, while I tried to kind of grow this music company, continue to work and make money. So that physically brought me to Philadelphia. And that was probably around 1999. And how did um, the beginnings of this company start? Uh, what made you choose this location here on South Street? Well, ending up on South Street in Philadelphia really was um, something I, I hadn't expected. Uh, I was producing music out of my bedroom for years, like so many other uh, music producers nowadays. Uh, I was producing out of an apartment studio, uh, just working with, with artists, and also I was an artist. So I just had that dream and, and kept working, and it wasn't always easy. 
Um, after about four years of working out of my apartment, I was invited by Mr. Don Gardner to come into the Philadelphia Clef Club of Jazz and base my studio. Um, at the time, he was a, a, a past legend of Philly. He had a bunch of old 45 records that he had made back in the 40s and 50s and 60s. And he asked me if I could digitally remaster those albums or records so that he can go on a tour somewhere in England. So I did that. They invited me into the Clef Club. I was there for a few years and was able to build a clientele really learned more about doing business on my own, and um, wandered down to South Street one day, which ironically was the place that I uh, used to promote years ago. And um, a friend of mine who owns a local store had a space, um, and he said, hey, would you be interested in, in subleasing the space to teach classes? And one thing led to another, and eventually we built this company that is about project recording, uh, audio education, media, and film and video. Awesome. So uh, the company is currently in the process of rebranding, correct? Correct. Uh, so what sort of changes are happening with the rebrand? Okay, well, right. The company was incorporated in the year 2000 as Little Drummer Boy Recordings. And a lot of Philadelphia musicians will remember the name Little Drummer Boy and the logo. Um, so we kept the logo, but we shortened the name um, to LDB10.com. LDB, the number 10.com. You know, we achieved 10 years in business in the year 2010. So that's where the 10 came from. And, you know, our website will now be a big part of our platform where we will still offer um, our clients the ability to pay for their recording sessions online. Um, we'll have online classes for clients and really offer an online community where, you know, independent musicians can come together with independent producers and uh, you know begin to continue to put out music and, and continue to inspire through this independent music revolution. Excellent. So is there an official date for the rebrand or do you want to keep your lips sealed about well, that? Well, the rebrand will be happening in summer 2012. Uh, we've added some green screen services uh, to our list of services so now bands and musicians and even corporations are able to make uh, company advertisements or music videos and through green screen, which obviously is a, is a wonderful technology. Uh, we're focusing more on project studio work. So we're interested in working with bands, artists, and musicians who are working on singles that they want to release through iTunes or through national or international platforms. We're looking for you know, students who are very serious about their audio education. You know, we'd rather have a handful of students who really want to make this a career and really want to study this craft, um, as opposed to maybe students who are looking for a social atmosphere. You know, we love what we do um, to the point where we want to make it a career and we want to teach people how to make it a career. So we offer those services to give you that foundation. Wow. And that's who LDB10.com is um, in a nutshell. Well, I definitely look forward to the future of LDB10.com. Thank you so much, Samori. Thank you, Carrie. I'm a big fan. Oh, go on. <laughs> Thank you again. That was Samori Coles, founder and producer of LDB10.com. You're watching In Session, and stay tuned for our next guest, Sunshine Rob of Sunshine Acid Tabs.